Welcome to the Equinity Podcast, where horse owners just like you share their incredible Equinity stories and how Equinity is changing their horses' lives. Whether you're searching for something to give your performance horse better focus, faster recovery, and more stamina, or in the extreme case where all hope seems lost, give your horse what it needs to help heal at a cellular level, you'll find it here. So jump in on today's episode to hear how Equinity is helping horses worldwide. Now, welcome your host, John Dowdy. Hello and welcome to this week's Equinity Podcast. We are swinging down into the great state of Texas and we've got Tyler and Jesse Wade on the call this week. Tyler and Jesse, welcome to the Equinity Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, I, I appreciate it. Like all the, the guests we have on, I know you guys are super busy and this is coming right down into the, the heat of uh, end of season here and coming up on NFR and all that good stuff. So let's get into um, uh, kind of your, your guys' lifestyle. Uh, Tyler, you're out there, you know, roping all over the place. Jesse, you're a barrel horse trainer and fraternity trainer. And let's go back to the beginning. How did you guys meet and how did that, let's give the audience kind of a, uh, a view of how all that started. I'm going to let Jesse take it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Smart, smart move. <laughs> well, December 2007, um, Tyler was, were you 15? 15. I was 17. We'll start with that. Go, he boy. He brag that I was older than him. Yes. Um, high school rodeo. You know, honestly, at high school rodeo, when you're the freshman and your girlfriend's a senior, oh. it, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yes. And then you get let me start with he lied about how old he was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as a freshman looking at a senior, I would have lied myself. So that's that's all <laughs> yeah. good. All right. He lied. But anyway, it all worked out, I guess. <laughs> yes. Well, if you add in all the leap years, I mean, technically he could be older. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he looks older and that's all that matters. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but no, I was. I was really shy, but Tyler was not. So, so he definitely brought me out of my shell. We probably would have never spoken, but we ended up going to IHOP on our first date. Nice. So, first night, and it's pretty. We've pretty well been best friends since then. I would say since day one. That's awesome. So it's been a blast since then, and it went by really fast. Yes, I know. Fourteen right. years. It zooms right on by. And fourteen years. Mm-hmm. Yep. And how many kids you have? One, Weston. He's three. Oh man, running the show. Uh huh. He run, he does run the show, so <laughs> he keeps us busy, keeps us on our toes. <laughs> and how's he adapting to horse life? Like any kid, I I would assume being brought up he, around that. You know, he just fits right in. He likes to go. He he is a great traveler. Um, but you know, we took off with him when he was five weeks old. It was either we stay at home or we go with Tyler to the Northwest. Um. So we went with him, naturally, to Washington and Oregon and all of those rodeos at the end of the year. So he doesn't know any different, you know, than load up and go. Yeah. So he, he likes to get in the truck and go. <laughs> Lucky so, you. <laughs> I know. Thank goodness. But I just credit it to loading him up. when he, I, I was scared to death to take him at that age, but I'm glad we did. Yeah. We, we had a lot of fun. Now, is he showing any favoritism towards a, a rope or a barrel horse at this point or He's just neutral. Uh, mostly tractors. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a tractor, man. He's he's the kid that's somewhat famous for falling asleep on his little John Deere tractor. Oh, man. That is uh, so awesome. He had a awesome. video viral. It had a couple million views and falling asleep on his tractor. Holy <laughs> God. He's already cooler than us. Oh, that is hilarious. No, he's a tractor and dirt man. Who knows if he'll ride a rope? Oh man! Well, hey, you need somebody to uh, make the arena look good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it all all bases covered. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Uh, he put a rope in his hand one day, and I I took it out. I didn't want to ruin his life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good plan. Good plan. Yeah. Now, now speaking of ropes, uh, you are now going to your fourth uh, NFR this year. So, congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, so um, leading up to your first time going to the NFR, what what was that like when uh, you you first found out and you're like, oh my gosh, my first time at the big show? How was that for um, you? Honestly, uh, 
it just kind of fell into my lap. It was one of those deals where we won a bunch of money at Cheyenne and a couple other places and boosted us up in standings kind of more than we anticipated. And, you know, I, I want to think that I was ready. I think I made the NFR the first time in 2016. 2012, I was the rookie of the year, finished 17th in the world, and we almost made the finals. And I guess looking back, I can't believe I got that close as bad as I wrote. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, I think that you get better with age and experience. And uh, like I said, it kind of looped me in right off the bat when we we almost made it the first year. And I had a couple tough years where I finished 17th like three times and uh, before I finally made it. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of come together. But it's it, watching – I don't even like to watch the first time I made the NFR on this video because I wrote so much worse than I think I do now. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I think that just goes to show that even if you make the NFR, there's so much more to learn every year. Sure. You know, honestly, honestly, from everything, from roping to life to horses and horse care and, you know, how you go about everything, uh, you know, experience sure. beats all. Yeah, absolutely it does. Yeah. So, uh, so now you're coming into your fourth year. How's the, um, how's your attitude difference? How do you prep for something like this? You know, um, I, I've asked all the more experienced guys what they did practically in FR. So like one guy told me he ran like 80 steers a day. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to run a hundred. And then, uh, you know, they give me all these rituals that they do. So I tried to do more and I, I, that was the first year I made it, and I almost did too much. I practiced too much and everything like that, and I, I just I was wore out by the time I got there. And I think now making sure that your yourself feels good and you're ready to go out there and, you know, not sleep as much and uh, kind of be ready every night and just quality more than anything. Like I've tried to run like 15 or 20 good steers a day. I might ride some colts like normal and run 30 on young horses and that sort of thing, but I try to get – 10 to 20 steers for me every day that's good quality steers and quality practice and uh just make sure i'm ready but not overdo it sure yeah that makes sense now i know there's a lot of people that tune into this and we've we've done a lot of podcasts um everywhere from you know rescue horses to english disciplines over into the western disciplines and when it comes to uh ropers specifically um and i'm sure it's in other disciplines as well you know you're flying around the country and some of the questions that that come up, I'm sure you've you've gotten this a lot. How are you roping on your same horse all the time? Are you partnering up with different people? Are you going after points? How does all that kind of work? Uh, you know, a lot of over the years, I guess, experience. You kind of know. You know, we kind of got buddies all over the country now. At least they'll let us stay places, or uh, you kind of know what to expect each place. And uh, like Coleman Proctor, he's let me ride his horse quite a few times. So, like, uh, I had to fly to Arcadia, Florida this year, and I entered the same time as Coleman because I knew his, his good bay horse would be there, and he let me on him. And, you know, it wasn't – it. I kind of knew what to expect with that horse, and so it made it a lot easier than just to hop on. And uh, when, when I went – when I rode with Trey this year, and uh, his dad, J.D., has got a ton of good horses, so we kind of always had something to ride here and there, flying around. and. They had a driver that helped us a bunch, and so you kind of just kind of make plans and find a find a route that works for you. You know what I mean? Sure. But uh, a lot of entering uh, just goes around what you can ride and what the setup is and uh, what number you're going to be and that sort of thing. That way, you kind of know if you get a second run on the same steer or that sort of thing. So it but, so- sounds a lot more complicated than just uh, hey, I think I'm going to go rope at this event this week. Yeah. You, you definitely don't just show up and hope for the best. You're going you're gonna to get your butt kicked. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. So. No. So you're strategic and um, obviously you're trying to accumulate points. Is it based on point system or money one? How's that work? It's on money one, but uh, sometimes you got to call it points. Like, uh, you know, we try to rope for a living, but if a rodeo pays 6000 but it costs you two to three to get there, sometimes you, you kind of have to go. You know, uh, this year you could only go to 65 rodeos, so you had to go to the best 65. And 
like I said, sometimes you're going to spend more than you want to or, you know, could possibly almost make just to get, you know, enough money earned in the standing to be where you want to be. So, like I said, there, there's a lot of strategy that comes into play like that. that makes a big deal. Sure. Big deal. Now, do you kind of figure all this stuff out on your own, or do you have somebody that helps you do that? Or is that where Jesse comes in, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the numbers guy around here. Ah. She does the horses, and I do the numbers. So, uh, no, I think you, you just kind of got to go with, with what makes sense. And like I said, I've just this is my ninth year rodeoing now, and you know, we kind of know where to go and when to go and what the best run's going to be and what steers they're going to rope and what horse we're going to ride and how we're going to get there and all that. So strategizing on the best plan for you is important too. So for you and your horse and your partner and what makes sense, you know, you you don't want to be at the best rodeo riding your worst horse because your best one's somewhere else. Right. Vice versa. And you don't want to go at the front of a rodeo that nobody ever wins at the front of. and so that sort of thing, you kind of got to strategize around all that. Yeah, it's like it's a, it's a lot more complicated than you think. No, like, like a big chess game sounds like. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. Now, uh, Jesse, with uh, with your background and training horses and fraternity horses, are are you uh, currently kind of going to the same rodeo? So you're riding barrels and Tyler's roping, or where are you at with uh, your career? We did not. This summer, I just stayed home because I have a lot of colts in training, um, which is a process, as most people know. We have them two to three years before we ever run them or compete on them. But, um, no, I stayed home and just rode colts. Um, most of mine are actually eligible to run next year at the maturity. Um, but I did just get a horse um, back uh, in training that is old enough to compete and go to the rodeo. So I did enter a couple of these smaller um, Texas rodeos coming up uh, this month with Tyler, so that'll be fun. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, I got to be there to keep him in line. Yeah, yeah. He's mostly just there to drive. You know. <laughs> yeah. Now, with your training on the horses and things, do you um, are you selling horses as well, or are you just? I sell a couple here and there. I used to more. Um, I've gotten away from that a little bit. I just I prefer to train that's what i i would say that's what i enjoy the most is starting horses and and training um but i will sell one here and there if i have mm-hmm. a good quality horse a nice horse in we sell them sure yeah jack of all trades absolutely got to keep it rolling <laughs> yep yeah. exactly so well i think this is a good segue because you know obviously you're on the uh, the team equinity podcast and so we're going to be talking about the equinity products uh equinity cool. horse excel also known as the powder and the equinity, the, <laughs> the equinity ultimate OEC known as the oil, you know, keep it simple right there. Powder and the oil. <laughs> yes. So um, obviously, um, well, it would be obvious to the three of us because we know, but everybody else tuning in, yeah, you haven't been using this product your entire career. So, I mean, you've been using it, yeah. what now, a year, year and a half, maybe, or two years? I, I don't know. Maybe a little more. Maybe a little more now because that was when we no, Fonzie we, uh, was our first horse. We got with Equinity yeah. because we had uh, an issue with one of our horses, and that was our go-to to start out. That's when we started believing in the product. We were definitely customers before, you know. Right. That's right. something I like to tell people. We, we gladly were getting online, and I was we were ordering this product way before we met you. Yeah. So, wow. so prior to even knowing about the product, was there any specific challenges that you guys were going through, you know, in the different disciplines with your horses that seemed to be kind of a common thing or just things that would pop up and, you know, obviously pre equinity products, was, was there something specific that you were kind of d- dealing with on a regular basis or things? Pop- you know, I don't know where to start exactly, but I would say, one thing that I noticed roping all the time is it felt like after a while we were injecting our horses every three or four months because we used them so much. And, uh, you know, after using Equinity for this long now, it seems like, you know, used to, it was monthly vet trips getting one injected, a tox injected, and first one thing another. And after using it long enough that, like, it seems like I almost forget 
that we might need to inject him once this year. Like, you know, it's, wow. it's, it's reduced that so much for us, as well as, you know, looking for a supplement that can help improve their muscle tone and their coat and that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yes. And um, being from Texas, you know, it's kind of hard to find alfalfa. And so we feed a lot of grass hay. And, uh, you know, they don't really stay as slick and shiny. And their muscle tone is not quite as good with it either. Mm-hmm. When they're not on alfalfa? Yeah, when they're not on alfalfa, when they're on grass hay. Yeah. Well, I know um, <clears throat> it was about a year ago or a year and a half whenever we – first started chatting because you your main horse i believe was in rehab due to some bone fractures was that yeah he had a fractured coffin bone and that's what sold us um he had a fractured coffin bone a good friend of ours Danita, she would help rehab our horses um and she's the one that told us to put him on equinity and i'm like sure you know it's, it's worth a try um and when we took him back for his recheck for his x-rays even the vet was blown away with the change he made when on the product because he wasn't healing that you know that coffin bone wasn't healing very quickly we were really worried about it um and that was that was Tyler's good horse that was the horse he rode um at the NFR the first two trips and uh when we took him back he was just like wow you know and that's what that's what sold us and then we've had we've had a couple different instances now horses that got injured you know and had actual bone injuries and to see how quickly um they've regenerated and gotten healed up it's, mm-hmm. it's crazy crazy you know even the vets look at it and they're just like wow like what did you do you know what did you do so <laughs> that's what sold that's what sold me immediately because that's like when you look at x-rays you can't that x-rays don't lie you know sitting that's there right. looking at the pictures so yeah i tell you it's uh we are definitely blessed um the, how well this product works. I'll, I'll take just a minute here for those that are tuning in. Uh, maybe this is the first time you've um, heard about the Equinity product. Um, and specifically right now, we're talking about the Equinity Horse Excel. It's 100% pure amino acids. There's no fillers, no sugars, no starches, and there's no loading dose. Serving size is 5.2 grams, which is about like a teaspoon, regardless of the size of the horse. And what makes this product very unique is it doesn't fit into a specific supplement category. In other words, it's not a quote, hoof supplement or joint supplement or muscle building or coat shine or recovery. What it's specifically designed to do is give the body what it needs to release its own hormones. And then when that happens, which by the way, happens very quickly within hours, then the body can send its own hormones to its own problem areas. And that's why it helps in so many ways and actually works at the cellular level so you could have 50 different horses with 50 different issues, and it's going to customize to what that horse needs, although there will be commonalities with all of them, you know, softer, shinier coat, filling out, more muscle tone, stronger, healthier, faster-growing hooves, which gives the farrier more to work with. And being on the market now for, uh, well, going on eight years, uh, in every single scenario that we've ever heard of where you're talking about an injured horse and the vet says, oh, it's going to be X amount of time before you can bring this horse back. We've always found that by using the product, they're always ready to go ahead of schedule. Is that kind of what you guys have found as well? Yes. 100%. Yeah. That's yeah. what's exciting. I, I, like when something does happen now, we just go to, we go to feeding it. And it's, it's interesting to see what it does. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's very, very quick. And I would say the vast majority of people notice changes in 30 days or less. I mean, yes. yeah. And yes. Even, what'd you find with, um, you know, being a high performance horse? Did you notice things specific with recovery or stamina or focus or hauling better, anything along those lines? Dude, you know what I was thinking yesterday actually was we haven't ha- been having to do, I feel like there was a point in time where everything was on ulcer medicine. Like we were just feeding it like candy. And I don't feel like we're really having to do that anymore. Yeah, that's interesting. Exciting. Yeah. Um, I feel like everything's gut has stayed good, the gut health even. And um, everything looks really good, which I know people say, oh, my horse looks good. But every, you know, we have like a lot of colts here too, you know, young to old. And um, everything looks good. Their coat looks good. Uh, we haven't had any feet issues. We don't have anything crazy going on with the farrier. I feel like if you have 20 horses, you usually have something like <laughs> yeah. that. And we, we don't, you know, and knock on wood, like maybe we're just really blessed. But I haven't 
you know, we don't have any of that now. And I feel like for a couple of years there, it was like nonstop with the, like Tyler said, we were constantly, I felt like we were constantly going to the vet and yeah. constantly dealing with issues. And so that's the fun part we've seen is I feel like there's been less and less of that. And it has to be that. That's the only thing we've changed. Right. And, you know, honestly, like, uh, everything is so precise now and they're, they're breeding horses for a certain event and that sort of thing. So like now heading even, you almost have to have a racehorse to compete with those guys and they're going to be a little bit hotter and a little more on the muscle and that sort of thing. But like you said, and horses that are hot and on the muscle and usually can really run they're you know, they're ulcers and stress and everything like that. It's kind of a big deal. And we've, we've eliminated a lot of that with Trinity. Yeah, that's um, and that's something we hear a lot now. I know when you when we first started talking, um, your your main horse there with the the fractures and the the coffin bone and everything. If I remember correctly, the horse was better than ever. You, you know, you told me that he just feels great, and but there was still something going on. It he still had this little cough going on, mm-hmm. and so what we did is we added the Equinity Ultimate OEC, aka oil. <laughs> now what that is it's a flaxseed based omega-3 oil uh it's got a thousand ius of natural cold press vitamin e and it's got colloidal silver all in one and there's nothing uh, about these ingredients that are unique i mean you can find stuff on the market that have one or two of them um but what we did is we put them all together just in a very high quality ingredients just premium top shelf stuff and so what did you find when you added the the ultimate OEC along with the amino acids, we had to give him. We there was a point where we were keeping him on allergy medicine, and even trying to do the shots. I think even, even they did. We tried depot shots, and nothing worked. But the oil, um, he doesn't cough anymore, does he at all? Well, well, like I said, with the oil, you know, it uh, increases the immune function in the body too, which like. Like you said, you're going around all these places and you're all around all these different horses and you don't know what any of them can catch or anything like that. So, like, I think, you know, like that being said, just something that they can yeah, have that's, as a, that's true, yeah. you know, to boost their immune system, you know, going around all these places. And, like, you know, we out west, it seemed like they, they were smoky a lot of times and the, the fires from California or Canada would blow in a lot of smoke. From, from Washington and those places when we would stay there and uh you know and it always seems like when I got out there and the weather changed a little bit that their coat wasn't as slick and shiny and it seemed to help with that too yeah that's well, it's really interesting the combination and you know we were on the market for about six six and a half years with just the uh horse XL the amino acids and uh-huh. Then we came out with help help of Dr. Zach Bruggen out of Arkansas. Um, he approached us and, you know, put this on our table and thought that it would just be a really great product in and of itself, but it also works in combination with the amino acids. And it does this in two ways. Uh, one, the amino acids are giving the body what it needs to repair at the cellular level. So the uh, ultimate OEC is helping to give those repaired cells some nutrition, which is important, but also, it's serving as a really powerful antioxidant, which helps reduce inflammation. And the combination of these two products, you know, it's just, it's simple, streamlined. And just like you were saying, Tyler, it, it uh, really helps boost the immune system. And, um, you know, overall, what we found through the years is a lot of times people just don't need to use a lot of other things. And, you know, we're not one to say, oh, we'll use our products and you don't have to use this, 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 and this. You know, we always tell people, if you want to try, you know, just the horse excel, for example, don't change anything you're doing, just add this to it. Mm -hmm. And then over the next couple of days to a couple of weeks to 30 days, you know, you should be able to see a significant enough difference with that one change to then determine whether you want to reduce or stop using other things. And so that's worked very well for us. I mean, you know, and great thing is, is there's not any negative side effects. I mean, they're amino acids. So, and you know, like, uh, Another plus is like we always have around 20 horses here and we give grain in the morning and grain at night and we've never had an issue with them finishing their grain with the, with the equinity in there. So t- yeah, that is a great thing. And uh, which is always a huge plus. You know? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Do you well, have... A lot of times they won't eat. Yeah. But, you know, you put something new in their feed and they're like, but like you said, what, how big is the scoop? A tea, or yeah, it's like a teaspoon. A the... Spoon, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hardly any of that. It's crazy. So there's no waste. Yeah, they don't waste it. Yeah, and even with the Ultimate OEC, the oil, probably it's a quarter measuring cut, 60 yeah. milliliters, two ounces. Mm-hmm. So Two squirts. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> right, so the two squirts the of the oil, one cup of powder. Yeah, there you go. See, see, he's a numbers guy. He's a numbers <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Well, Hello. I tell you what, I... Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. I know you are super busy. And for those of uh, uh, the, those that are tuning in and maybe they've just learned about the product and, you know, they might be on the fence a little bit as, oh, this sounds too good to be true or, you know, you're just promoting it because you're part of the team at Quinnity or w- what would you have to say to those folks uh, just to get them off the fence maybe if, if they're sitting there? I was- we were buying it before we ever even met you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were gladly we were in these, we were first. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> if that tells and, you uh, anything. You know, I think that anything you can do to improve your horse, I mean, is one of the key factors to winning now. Any little thing you can do to get the next level on the edge on the competition, I think you should do uh, in and out of the arena. With you know, with yourself, with the way you practice, the way you eat, the way you perform, same as your horses. So uh, that's kind of made us believers. Yeah, that is awesome. As long as none of your competitors are listening to this, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> just, I always just do more than everybody else. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> oh yeah, I only wrote two to prepare. You know, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, you guys are practicing. <laughs> You're wasting your time doing that? Come on. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, T. Wade and Jesse Wade out of Texas, thank you guys so much for taking the time to share your stories and experiences here on the Team Equinity Podcast. Thank you. Yep, thanks for having us. All right, you bet. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's all for this episode of the Equinity Podcast. For more information on purchasing Equinity, be sure to visit our website at teamequinity.com, where you'll also find product information as well as more testimonials on how others have seen amazing results by implementing Equinity into their horse's supplement regime. We'll have more stories on how Equinity is helping horses worldwide right here on a future episode of the Equinity Podcast.